okay, as we all know, the Schumer Rounds Amendment was gutted by the NDAA or the version of it that passed. But could some teeth be put back into that bad boy? Could the Schumer Rounds Amendment actually amount to something and get us somewhere? Well, Danny Sheehan is saying yes. So let's talk about that and a whole lot more. It's time for another UFO News Roundup. So get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like and subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, uh, here's what Danny had to say on a recent episode of Fade to Black. Uh, what do you think you'll have? Uh, come February 9th. Uh, the, the Senate is going to do something on February 9th, uh, hopefully, uh, regarding uh, the Schumer Rounds Amendment. What do you think will be? Well, we'll, we'll have a, a, a much clearer look at what the uh, new statute that the United States Senate is planning to pass uh, to try to reinsert into the 2023 bill uh, additional provisions that are going to accelerate the public revelation of this information. Uh, we'll have a much better idea there as to what has been settled upon uh, by, the, by the Senate Intelligence Committee and the Senate leadership, both Republican and Democrat, uh, as to what it is that they're willing to back up uh, and, and put in front of the House and uh, attempt to leverage that passage uh, to get it passed, uh, you know, Michael Turner, uh, who chairs the House Intelligence Committee, and to get it passed, uh, you know, Michael Rogers, who chairs the House Armed Services Committee, they're going to be mustering their power in their alliances in both political parties to get that new law passed. So we'll see how far they're willing to go. Uh, my information is that they're, they're not willing really to give up any substance of what it is they asked for the first time. Uh, it's just that they're going to make it much clearer for example, they're willing to say, look, if we're going to take take the, the uh, craft back out of your hand as a private aerospace industry, we're going to pay you a reasonable amount of money for what you have already undertaken and you've expended uh, on that. We're not going to give you the title. We're not going to let you keep the title to the UFO craft, but we're going to we're going to give you a reasonable payment for that. It isn't as though their lawyers didn't realize that that was part of eminent domain. Because in the Constitution of the United States, uh, in the Fifth Amendment uh, of the United States, it says specifically that the United States government has the power of eminent domain and they can, they can take property uh, as long as they pay a reasonable and just uh, price for the property. Okay, so there you go. There's a little bit more to it, but uh, that's it in a, in a nutshell. They're wrangling over eminent domain, and that seems to have been uh, possibly the main deal killer the first time around uh, with the two mics. Uh, so uh, if they can satisfy the aerospace companies uh, that they will be properly compensated, uh, it might even get title uh, to it, uh, then uh, will the mics allow uh, this to go forward and allow this to, to pass. Um, so uh, time will tell, time will tell. You know, I'm of two minds about it, uh, honestly, because, you know, I can understand how, you know, the government coming along and seizing all your stuff from private individuals and corporations, uh, you know, it kind of puts a bad taste in my mouth, especially if it's going to go to Arrow uh, or the like. Now, maybe we'll get Carl Nell. We'll get some actual pro-disclosure people, uh, you know, as the new head of Arrow. I, I sure hope so. But I'm assuming it's going to be another lovely Dr. Shocker Patrick clone. Uh, so, uh, you know, my, my hopes aren't really with Arrow. And if, uh, you know, so, but, but it could also be this gatekeeping uh, committee that was going to be formed by the Schumer Rounds Amendment. So, and I wasn't really impressed by the people that uh, some were uh, picking uh, to uh, be on that committee, including a former CIA director, uh, Mr. Gatekeeper himself. So I, I you know, I, I really don't know about the government uh, seizing stuff uh, for the sake of disclosure, because I don't think those elements are pro-disclosure. But if we do get Carl Nell or somebody in charge of that uh, whole thing, then things are a lot different, right? So it really depends on the motivations and the individuals involved uh, in obtaining that material. 
uh, and we just don't know. I don't know at this point, but I, I understand uh, how, you know, it, it makes sense to me that there would be pushback against this eminent domain clause. At the same time, it's not like Lockheed Martin or Boeing or Raytheon have been sharing this technology with the rest of us either. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it's not like them hoarding this technology is doing us any favors. Uh, so, you know, maybe we could hope uh, that some uh, pro-disclosure elements would get uh, in the government, uh, would actually get this technology and would be a little more forthcoming. So, you know, time will tell, time will tell. Uh, I did want to go over some uh, thoughts by Joe Emergia. Always has thoughtful th thoughts. He says, regarding the title of the craft, it's Sol Carl Nell, the main guy behind the UAPDA language, said something different. Read on. Uh, Sheehan said, uh, they're willing to say, look, if we're going to take the craft back out of your hands as a private aerospace industry, we're going to pay you a reasonable amount of money for what you have already undertaken and you've expended. We're not going to let you keep the title of the UFO craft. Now, I'm a little unclear what title means. Do they mean rights to the, the craft? Do they mean, I'm not quite sure what that means. So if you know, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, but at the Seoul, Seoul Foundation Conference, Carl Nell said, if you have a problem with eminent domain, you probably have a problem with this amendment. Government wants to restore oversight of the material so we can make better progress scientifically. Does ED affect eminent domain? Does it affect property rights? IPR? No. Any IPR created out of the material is retained by the owner. So I think that's what they mean by the title and Joe uh, saying, yeah, sounds like they're going to let them keep the title. So they still have the property rights uh, is what Carl Nell is saying, but uh, that the government will actually have the material. I'm, I'm a little unclear on all of that. And obviously all of that is still under debate right now, uh, but we may have some answers on all of that on February 9th. Uh, so uh, yeah, fingers crossed for the best outcome. I think that if Carl Nell is the one doing it, uh, then we can be reasonably optimistic. But if it's, you know, Sean Kirkpatrick or one of his cohorts, then we're screwed. So uh, we'll, we'll see. Fingers crossed. Speaking of the cover up, what does the government say about the jellyfish UFO? Uh, yeah, obtained and released by Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp. And this is from Christopher Sharp. Uh, we do not comment on the authenticity all authenticity uh, of alleged DOD material that may have been leaked. DOD uh, takes public interest in UAP seriously. Oh, yeah. And is committed to openness and accountability. <laughs> they have no self-awareness. <laughs> oh, they have no self-awareness at all. I love it. Uh, this commitment <laughs> must be balanced with the department's obligation to protect sensitive information sources and methods. To that end, ARO will provide updates to the public via its website as it resolves UAP cases. Yeah, and their definition of resolving is calling it a balloon. Uh, including sharing the analytic approach and method used for each case, as well as imagery when approved for public release. The Department of Defense takes the potential unauthorized disclosure of national security information very seriously. Uh, DOD organizations, including Arrow, regularly emphasize uh, to their workforces the importance of protecting national security information in accordance with information uh, security laws, regulations, and processes. Now, that's interesting. That, that statement is interesting in several ways. One, it is a leak. It's not like the uh, quasi-leaks of 2017 uh, where Lou uh, smuggled out those three videos, uh, the, the Tic Tac and the, the two Roosevelt uh, videos. So, um, uh, it, you know, that, that was a legal leak. It was sneakily done, uh, but it was legal. Uh, my understanding of how Lou did that was to get them uh, uh, unclassified. Uh, not declassified, but unclassified for inter-office uh, sharing. Uh, and then when they were no longer classified, 
uh, he was able to get them out uh, without it actually being a crime. Uh, so that's my understanding of how Lou was able to do that. And then they got that to TTSA um, and uh, Bob Junkle uh, leading us to our present pass uh, in uh, UFO disclosure. So, you know, ultimately we got the UAP ta task force and David Grush out of that and the Schumer Rounds Amendment. Uh, so, um, you know, that, but that was a legal leak, not, not, not an actual leak, a quasi leak. So it looks like the jellyfish UFO or UAP video was actually a leak. It was illegal. Uh, that means uh, Jeremy Corbell has some really interesting inside sources and that are giving him really juicy material. And I, I love it. I love it. Uh, of course, I am not condoning any criminal behavior. So bad, bad on whoever did that. Okay, and uh, yeah, so what, what else What else can we uh, take out from this? Uh, is that Arrow, Arrow uh, is, is, the, uh, is the, the leading the charge. They are going to be the ones telling us what is what and what's legit and what's not. And they will share with us what they want us to see. And they will debunk whatever they want to debunk. So, uh, and, you know, again, if Carl Nell gets in as the director of Arrow, things could change and maybe I'll have more faith in it. But as of now, I have no faith in Arrow. So, uh, yeah, an interesting statement with some interesting connotations. Meanwhile, speaking of debunking, uh, Mick West has just released a picture of an alien. <laughs> I kid, I kid. This wasn't released by Big Mick West, but he is notorious uh, to me uh, for uh, calling the Las Vegas alien a raccoon. <laughs> no, was it the Las Vegas alien or was it the, the, the South American alien? I, th I think that may have been one from Peru. I think that may have been one from Peru uh, with uh, the, being, uh, the mantis being outside the window. Uh, calling it a raccoon. I love it. I love it. And that's a pretty cute raccoon. In more positive news, Fox News is reporting on interdimensional UFOs. What? Close encounters of congressional kind, lawmakers struggle to grasp alleged interdimensional nature of UFOs. What happened on the grassy knoll at Dealey Plaza in Dallas? Does a mysterious serpentine beast glide through the icy waters of Loch Ness? Is there life on other planets? So you can tell there is kind of a slightly nudge-nudge, uh, you know, uh, dismissive attitude. Uh, but then it gets into the serious stuff. Uh, talking about the skiff with uh, Inspector General uh, Thomas Monheim. Um, and uh, talking about the representative's uh, reactions. I just wasted time. Uh, I'm more concerned than I was going in. There is a concerted effort to conceal as much information as possible, uh, alleged Representative Andy Ogles. Lawmakers contend they aren't hearing from people who really know what's out there. They send us bureaucrats who don't know on purpose, said Representative Glenn Grothman. Uh, and I think that's uh, an apt statement, right? Uh, of course, you know, the Inspector General knows some stuff. He's got all the uh, David Grush evidence. Uh, but it might not be as sinister as some suspect. Uh, this meeting, unlike the one we had previously, actually moved the needle. This is the first time we kind of got a ruling on what the IG thinks of those claims, said Jared Muskowitz. Uh, the claims Muskowitz speaks of stem from allegations former military intelligence officer and whistleblower David Grush made. Um, do you believe our government has made contact with intelligent ETs, said Nancy Mace uh, uh, to David Grush at the hearing. And it goes on talking about David Grush and the skiff. So I just think that's really fascinating. And yeah, then it gets into Anna Polina Luna and her comments about the interdimensional aspect of, of you know, the phenomenon. Uh, is this something that bends time and space? The reporter asked Luna. Uh, the Florida Republican didn't respond directly. Um, uh, she said, he, he, David Grush, said interdimensional. He refused to use certain terms. Anyway, I'll let you read the full article at your leisure, but I think this is amazing that uh, mainstream news, uh, if Fox can be considered mainstream news, is openly commenting on the interdimensional aspect of UFOs. 
Now, could it be a more serious article without a reference to the Loch Ness Monster? Uh, yes, it could. It absolutely could. And it does get a little uh, political in places. So be warned uh, going in if you read that. But, uh, but really fascinating that they are covering this in a somewhat serious way, even going into the weirder aspects of the phenomenon. Okay, and check this out. Representative Raja Krishnamurthy is considering a bipartisan letter to uh, Biden asking for UFO transparency after the ICIG skiff. Uh, Representative Raja, I'm just going to call him Raja, is considering a bipartisan letter to the White House uh, to request UAP transparency. That's amazing. So that's what he got after the skiff. And that's actually a pretty big change, it seems like, for that individual. Uh, the top Democrat on the China Select Committee opposes a select UAP committee. Uh, so this is not like a big UFO guy. Uh, but after coming out of that skiff, uh, it, it seems like he is more favorably inclined to the, the phenomenon and uh, learning the truth of it and demanding that the White House provide that truth. I think that's amazing. Also, this is really interesting. Ask a poll. Uh, made this list of attendees to the skiff uh, and their what what they had to say uh, about uh, what they got out of the skiff. Mike Turner was there, our our friend Mike, who killed the uh, Schumer rounds amendment. Uh, he said um in cheers <laughs> upon leaving the skiff. Uh, China uh, select China ranking Raja. Our committees have the wherewithal to get this done. Okay, so maybe he's still in opposing the UAP Select Committee. He's saying the existing committees already have the wherewithal. Interesting. Uh, so Oversight Subcommittee uh, Chair Glenn Grothman says there's stuff he didn't have. It's very frustrating. Mike Waltz says, uh, I want to understand if the task force that Congress has mandated truly has access. Uh, well, they don't want access. right? If, if you're talking about the lovely Sean and his, his people, uh, Dr. Uh, excuse me, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, no, I just came from the skiff. Thank you. Okay, well, uh, Andy Big said, like every good meeting, I'm left with even more questions than before. Nancy May said, I won't name names, but we have a better sense of who that might be today. And obviously, these are just partial uh, answers, just little snippets of what they had to say. Uh, Tim Burchett said, there were people there that normally weren't there that took interest. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, Anna Polina Luna said, there has been a long-term effort to really keep this information outside of the purview of Congress. No joke. You tell him, Anna. Uh, Representative Robert Garcia said, we don't know what UAPs are. It's a national concern, uh, security concern. Well, I hate to lean too much into the national security aspect. Clearly, if the UFOs wanted to wipe us out, they would wipe us out. Now, you know, like Lou Elizondo always says, you know, just because you find, uh, you know, tracks in your house, uh, muddy boot prints in your house, doesn't mean that that individual is out to harm you, uh, but it is disconcerting that somebody can enter your uh, domicile uh, undetected and you can't do anything about it. And, you know, I can understand that point. And uh, from the Department of Defense, that is the logical point of view for them to have. They are the Department of Defense, uh, and but they can't defend this. Uh, so... The best you can really do is try to have a positive interaction with a phenomenon. Uh, don't don't get weird about it. Uh, of course, you know, they, they are shooting at these things, and we don't know why they're shooting at them. So there, there's just so many unanswered questions we have. They're working with some beings. They're shooting at other beings. Uh, have they chosen the right side in some sort of cosmic conflict? Do we trust the control group to have chosen the right side? I don't. I don't, but let me know what you think. Uh, but yeah, there's just too many unanswered questions to really make a, an informed decision uh, about that. Uh, but yeah, uh, Eric Burleson says, it appears it's not going to be easy to get access. No, no, it's not. Uh, Muskowitz says, places actually to maybe go. Okay, yeah, they, they learned a direction forward 
Andy Ogle said, and this is confirmed by Matt Laszlo, no interview yet. Random fact, his only committee is financial services. Okay, and then there's, uh, and, yeah, and Andy Ogles has not been confirmed. He is an unconfirmed attendee. So there you go. That, that's uh, the people that were there and some of the things they are saying. Uh, very interesting. But let me know what you think about that and everything else covered today in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. I sure would appreciate it. Smash the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of a future video. You don't want to miss a thing. Join me on social media. There's Facebook and Twitter links below. Love to see you guys there. If you wanted to support Cosmic Road in an even bigger way, please consider becoming a channel member. Channel members are rock stars and I really appreciate you guys' support. Thank you. Meanwhile, there are plenty of other videos on the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road, signing out.